Hello everybody. I believe you're doing good. Yeah. Um how should I start? Yeah, I was actually led to do this especially for all Christians. The church very important and of course non-Christians out there if you think you'd like to find out the truth about Christianity and um, I really would want you to listen because I know there are some of you out there who have burdens in their heart you know and they're not really sure if their religion is the right one but I just would like you to listen you know I just have something to say about Christianity I used to be one of those um, who also used to wonder why God had to give the law you know in the Old Testament even though he knew Jesus was going to come in in future yeah because the Bible says that God is always the same you know he's God he was he's uh, the same yesterday today and he would always be the same forever so then the law in the Old Testament and grace um, like people say in the New Testament for this reason so many people think God has changed yeah but um, wrong because God is always the same the Bible says God is the same so if Christians think okay God um, came up with the law in the Old Testament and grace in the New Testament that it means God has changed that's wrong yeah God is always the same that's what the Bible says so it's either you stick with the Bible or you don't and um, if he never changes you know if God is always the same so why the law and now is there no law and grace okay mm, yeah um, he led me through his word and um, I got to find out why and I'd like to tell you why God is a master planner you know um, he decided to send prophets you know before the New Testament because he was trying to prepare for the coming of his son Jesus Christ meaning God had planned this earlier you know because that was the only way out you see he's love and he decided to make man in his own image and he wanted man to love him back you know so because we are not computers you know God has not created us to program us so he has given us this free will so he decided to create us and he knows if we can love him back then it will be natural it's gonna be real but if he decides to you know um, push some buttons and say okay Adam love me now you know and Adam decides to love him and that's not real you know it's not natural and that is not what God wanted yeah so he sent his prophets then for the preparation of Jesus because Adam sinned and then because Adam sinned, men and women began to sin. And um, the Bible says in 1 Peter 1.20 that um, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, that was Jesus, but was manifest in these times for you. Yes, for you. Imagine this. Moses, for example, was sent. Elijah was sent. Elisha was sent. Jeremiah, so many others were sent, you know, um, even John the Baptist was sent, you know, but did the Israelites believe all these people, even if some, like Elijah for example, called down fire from heaven, you know, and they saw fire with their own eyes and they heard about this, no, you know, they still did not even accept God, they still did not even believe, why? You know, a few would have believed, yeah, but even if it's just because of one person, God is willing to send a prophet to the world. You see, because the Bible even says that just one soul is very important to God. Yeah, so that tells us even if Jesus was sent earlier, just a few also would have believed in Jesus. The same way it happened also in the New Testament, also in the Old Testament, in the time of Jesus, you know, um, after, before his disciples, they still did not believe in Jesus. 
even if we hear about the stories and the things that Jesus did today, so many of us today do not even believe in Jesus. So that's just man for you. you know, it wouldn't have changed anything. Yeah, and um, prophecies are always there and they have to be fulfilled. You know, prophecies always have to be fulfilled and Jesus came to fulfill all these prophecies as well. So what all these prophets prophesied in the Old Testament, Jesus fulfilled them. And so many Jews um, do not believe in Jesus because they've not really understood the Old Testament, you know. But this is not a topic that I'll be going into right now. But um, in time to come, um, if Jesus tarries, because I believe he's going to come soon, and that's also what triggered me to do this. If he tarries, I'm still going to talk about that. Yeah, and um, like I said, prophecies always have to be fulfilled. And those in the Old Testament perhaps only had the chance to believe in God or not. They only had just one chance, kind of, to believe in God or not. And therefore, a lot of them did not make eternity with God. So many of them were perished. So many of them perished, were killed. You know, um, they worshipped idols and they were immediately killed. They had immediate judgment. But imagine how many died in the time of Noah. You know, none experienced, none of them in the Old Testament experienced the new life of Christ. But we do right now because Jesus came. And after Jesus, Jesus sent his Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit resides in us. Through the Holy Spirit, we have this new life. You know, new spirit in us. And um, instead of just the few to be saved right now, Many have the chance to be saved. Many have the chance to make it to God this time around. And that is an advantage for us. Yeah. And the Bible says in Romans 15.4 that uh, whatsoever things were written aforetime, you know, before, were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope reading the old testament we can learn from all these people that's what the bible says you know we can see their mistakes we can see the right things they did and we can avoid the mistakes you know they didn't have the chance to learn us we have the chance right now you know and so we should be excited actually that god has given us the opportunity to learn from these people so please don't listen to the people who tell you that you don't have to read the Old Testament. Romans tells us that we need to learn from these people for patience, for comfort, and hope. Very important. And if the New Testament can tell us that we need these people, then who are we not to obey the voice of God? very funny right yeah and um, yeah that's that's just this even Jesus read from the Old Testament they did not have the New Testament none of the disciples had the New Testament they all read from the Old Testament when Jesus um, resurrected he met with his disciples he had to go through the scriptures with them you know to make them understand and they were great and we say wow the apostles were great but how come we don't have great men today like that? They knew, they, they understood, not only knew, they understood the Old Testament, but people today avoid the Old Testament. So why should you be like the apostles? It's not possible. Yeah, Jesus read, for example, a scripture in Isaiah 61, 1. And um, the scripture reads, I'm going to read it for you. The scripture says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And um, yeah, and this scripture we can also see in Luke. Yeah, we can see in Luke chapter eighteen and nineteen. That's actually where Jesus read it. Yeah, but he read the Old Testament. You know. 
But if we really know what was in the Old Testament, we can know what Jesus was trying to say here. You know, Jesus avoided, not avoided, avoided, maybe I could say, say that. Jesus omitted the final sentence that was actually in the Old Testament. And that sentence um, um, says, the, the day of vengeance of our God. And why did Jesus say, okay, God has given me his spirit, that the spirit of God is upon me to preach, to preach, you know, to set the captives free, to give sight to the blind, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. But he did not talk about the vengeance of our God. You know why? Because the time for the fulfillment was not yet come. The time is still going to come. The Bible talks about the vengeance of God. The Bible talks about the wrath of God. And the wrath of God is going to come. The Bible talks about the judgment of God. But nowadays the church do not preach about this. They only preach about the beautiful things. You know. Because they say. Um, they say God is just beautiful. Of course God is beautiful. They say God um, has no no rot or God they've forgotten the real side of God they've forgotten who God is Jesus said something Jesus said something in Matthew Jesus said for verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass away one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled and right now we are in the end times you see so things are starting to come up you know things that were written in the bible are being fulfilled right now and Jesus said everything that is written in the scripture shall be fulfilled that means the day of vengeance of God shall be fulfilled we cannot script that out of the scripture it's already there and jesus said it's gonna be fulfilled one jot you see yeah that day is coming and since he said no law shall pass until all be fulfilled and not all are fulfilled yet therefore that tells us that the law still stands you get it not all are fulfilled yet and nothing will pass away until all be fulfilled but why do some say there is no law let me go into this the law um, was there to reveal the sin of man the, the law was there to reveal how what man could do you know who man actually was you know, not able to measure up to God's standard. The law was actually, or let me not call it the law right now, okay, so you understand what I mean. The commandments were actually this, was actually the standard of God. The, it, 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 it was the nature of God. You know, and God said, if you fulfill these laws, you shall be, you will be holy. You see, so, this commandment was there to show man could do nothing without God. You see, it was impossible for them to, to obey all the commandments. You see, therefore they could not match up to God's standard. Yeah, and um, yeah, if you really understand then the Old Testament, you cannot, you, if you really understand it, then you would have the revelation of the law and you would understand God's grace and God's salvation you see because the Old Testament was the foundation so we cannot do the foundation and start to build on the air you know so you really have to understand the foundation and then you can understand what exactly is happening in the New Testament so that's why it's also necessary to read the Old Testament then the characteristics of the commandment the commandments, this law, the commandments are holy. For example, in um, 
Romans chapter 7 verse 21, the Bible says that if you keep these commandments, you shall be holy. And the commandment also was perfect. David also said it in Psalm 19, 7 and also in Romans chapter 7 verse 7. You see, the law is perfect and what did Jesus say about this? On the, on the Sermon on the Mount, um, 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 yeah, he had doubts on the Mount, on the Sermon, Jesus said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophet. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill them. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, none of my word shall pass away, until all the laws be fulfilled. And then he said something, he said, Whoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, Jesus had not given his disciples commandments yet. Listen, because some people try to say um, um, the commandments Jesus talked about was only love your neighbor as yourself. But it's not true. Now, this is Matthew 17, you know, about the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, the least, not even you know, the most important. We'll come into that later. But he said the least commandment and shall, and shall teach men to break them. And shall teach men so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. Exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. What is Jesus trying to say? Jesus is not trying to say that the Pharisees were in every way, you know, bad and corrupt. They had their good sides. They knew the law. They knew the law, okay? They knew the commandments, okay? That was also a good side of the Pharisees. But they were going the wrong way actually because they refused to to um, believe that Jesus was actually the Messiah whom the law which they believed in talked about and then they decided to hold you know the um, what they felt was right you know the doctrine of men note note very important in Matthew 17 yeah. Did um, Jesus said he did not destroy the law, but he came to fulfill it. You see? So if you teach people the commandments or the law, then you are great. So what about these commandments then? What commandments did Jesus talk about on the on the mount? Verse 22, for example, Jesus said, Thou shalt not kill. Was this not a part of the Ten Commandments? Yes, it was. But Jesus did not say not the commandments of the Father. But Jesus said, Thou shalt not kill. And Jesus said, well, If you are angry with your brother without a cause, then there is judgment for you. Jesus also said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But Jesus said, If you look on a woman to lust, you know, after her, um, um, then you've committed adultery with her already in your heart. Then Jesus also talked, committing adultery is part of the Ten Commandments, number two Jesus talked about. Then Jesus talked about divorce. Jesus said, um, 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 if you divorce for no cause, it is wrong because Moses said, that it was possible to divorce, you know, and if a man divorces a woman, then he's allowed to write a letter and divorce her, and then another man is allowed to marry her. But Jesus said here, um, anyone who divorces for no cause, except it be for fornication, causes this woman to commit adultery. And who marries this woman? commits adultery you see but the law said you can divorce 
But Jesus said no. Now Jesus changed one law. Alright. Then Jesus also talked about swearing. Jesus said, Thou shalt not forswear thyself. And he said, Swear not at all. But the law said you could. Jesus changed the second law. Yeah. Number another one. Jesus talked about an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But Jesus also said, But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other side. You see, the law said an eye for an eye. If they smite you, you smite back. But Jesus said no. He changed the third one. The, Jesus talked about love your neighbor as yourself and hate, and hate your enemy. That, um, that was what the law said, what Jesus said. But then what did Jesus say? Jesus said no. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Jesus changed the fourth law. These were, these were just all the laws Jesus talked about. But now let's separate these laws into two groups. First, Jesus talked about um, um, thou shalt not kill and he talked about adultery. These were parts of the commandments. A part of the Ten Commandments. You see? And um, the second group, Jesus talked about divorce, thou shalt not swear, an eye for an eye, and um, hate your enemy. These were not part of the Ten Commandments. Have you gotten it? Therefore, Jesus did not Jesus did not touch the first two commandments which were from the commandments of the Father. Did you see Jesus did not change them, but Jesus lifted them higher, Jesus lifted the standards of this commandment. He made them even much more difficult because Jesus and the Father are one. Jesus the father cannot give a law and Jesus comes and says, okay, I've changed the law of my father. My father made a mistake. No way. The father sent Jesus. You see? You understand? But the other laws, Jesus changed. Why? The first two laws showed love. Love God. Love your neighbor. But the other laws were evil. They um, portrayed hatred. Even the verse um, 38 and 39 in um, this uh, chapter, Jesus said so that it, it, um, it shows hatred. See, so Jesus had to change them to love. That means the commandments of the Father still stands. But the laws of Moses were changed by Jesus Christ. And that's the law we are not supposed to walk by. But the law of the Father still stands. Nobody changed it in the, in the scriptures. But I don't know why pastors out there preach this. And I don't know why Christians and believers also decide to believe this. They don't read the scriptures themselves. Yeah. And, um, yeah. <sighs> it's really painful. I don't really know what to say. And for more examples, you know, but just to give a few. The adulterous woman who was to be stoned, they said to Jesus, the law of Moses commands us to stone her. And But they did not say, God the law of God commands us to stone her. Then Jesus stopped them because that was the law of Moses. Jesus changed it. They told Jesus, um, his disciples go against the traditions. You know, by, I think, eating um, in the day of the Sabbath instead of fasting. But Jesus said, but you all go against the commandments of God. You get it? Jesus said, why do you go against the commandments of God? By your own tradition, by the tradition of men. God said, and Jesus said, listen, honor your father and your mother. But they do not honor their father and their mother, you see. They did not obey the um, commandments of God. They were going against the commandments of God. And Jesus was talking to them about this, condemning this act. He did not condemn them, but con condemn the act. 
why do you disobey God's commandment, but you obey Moses' tradition? Because Moses' tradition was the tradition of man, and they preferred that. Have you now gotten the difference? Obviously, Jesus did not scrap the law of his father, because they are one. You know? And since the law is perfect, then why did it not change man? Yeah, as we have seen, the issue was not the law. So, what else then was the problem? Man was the problem. The condition was, if you keep all the law, you shall be holy. Because God is holy and the laws were holy. The laws are holy. The commandments of God are holy. But if you miss one, then you are guilty of all the Ten Commandments. So, it is as good as not even keeping one. And it's just time wasted. So how was man the problem? The problem was the flesh. The flesh of man. Because um, um, the Bible says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, and God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and um, for sin, Jesus condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Do you see? Romans, the New Testament says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. That righteousness of the law, the commandments of God, might be fulfilled in us. So Jesus had to condemn the flesh because the flesh was the problem. You know, Adam sinned. God gave Adam dominion. But he sinned, therefore sin, sin entered. And sin stole that dominion from man dominion from Adam, therefore sin ruled over the flesh. You see? And that was why man could not even obey God's law because sin was ruling. Man just had to disobey God's law. And hmm, what did Jesus say also in Matthew chapter 17 verse 13? Jesus said uh, that the weakness of the flesh and the traditions of man makes the word of God quote makes the law of God of no effect. The weakness of the flesh makes the law of God of no effect. So I never told you, um, um, the, I never told you before now that the word of God never contradicts, you know, themselves, right? The words of God don't contradict themselves. But now you, you now know. You know, everywhere you go, everything says the same thing in the word of God. So how did man get dominion then back from sin? A man who still had dominion over sin, because he never sinned in life, had to save man in the flesh. Had to save the man with sin in the flesh. And this man who never had sin, who still has this dominion, is Jesus. Jesus carried sin in the flesh. And he nailed sin in the flesh to the cross. Get it? Sin still lives today, but Jesus killed the flesh. That, um, um, that, that weak flesh, that flesh that was weak and, was, and could not obey the word of God, that we would have dominion over that flesh. Jesus killed it now. You know, and now sin becomes alone. No more flesh to rule over. And man can be free from the flesh, from that flesh now that was sinful because the flesh is dead. But he can, but he can only be free if he accepts the sacrifice of that sinless man, Jesus Christ. Otherwise, man is still entangled in sin. Except you accept the death, you believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Then, and you proclaim this. Then you can be free from sin that entangles the flesh. So what have we learned today? That the commandments are still there. Jesus did not know these commandments. And he wants us to still believe in them. And I hope you were blessed. And next I'll be talking about 
the greatest of the laws and so many things that I believe is useful and important for the church. Thank you for your time. God bless.